looking at here is an Ohm's Law wheel. So Ohm's Law can help you solve for these four basic components of electricity. Um, amperage, voltage, power, and resistance. So amperage is designated by the symbol I. Voltage is designated by the symbol E. Power, usually measured in watts, is designated by the symbol P. And resistance, usually measured in ohms, is designated by the symbol R. And so you can see that each one of these, in, for instance, the one in the upper left corner quadrant of the wheel is amperage. And there's your I. And to find I, you can use the three formulas that are in the wheel. The same thing, the top right is voltage, designated by the E. To solve for that, you can use the three formulas in the outer ring of the upper right part of the wheel. And the same thing for the bottom. Now, <clears throat> if you see the uh, very top, the very top two to each side of center, uh, one on the I and one on the E, they're using what well, I believe that is the square root of. Um, so I took electrical theory 35 years ago, and at one time I knew that, and I think that's what it is, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, in my 35 plus years of working in the trade, I've never used that, and that's more for an engineering application or an electronics application. If you're working on circuit boards and stuff like that, you would need to know those. Um, really, honestly, for all electrical, commercial, industrial, residential wiring, you will use that very, very little. Again, unless you're at the engineering level um, designing things, but for the most part, um, the values of resistors and stuff like that, to find those out, it's very important for electronic components. The really only time you really deal with the aspect of resistance in wiring applications would be as far as voltage drop because resistance is found on the conductors. So if a circuit starts out with you know, 120 volts and it travels out over a wire, the longer it travels, the more voltage is lost due to resistance. And so, you know, if you get to a certain distance, that has to be accounted for because it'll drop to the point where, you know, voltage and amperage is inversely proportional. So as the voltage drops, excuse me, as the voltage dro drops, the amperage that that circuit draws raises. And so that's very important when doing those calculations. And so um, the National Electric Code has provisions and calculations to make for that resistance and to account for that voltage drop. And it's measured in um, usually in the length of the run, not necessarily the impedance value or the uh, resistance value of you know the value of the resistor and so in applied electrical applications that isn't really used so we can just disregard those again if you're doing something with electronics circuit boards it becomes a little more uh, a little more critical i believe that symbol on the top left and the top right i believe that's square they're you know, it's square root of. So what they're saying on the top right is E equals the square root of P times R. Again, don't quote me on that. Don't worry about it. We're not going to use it. You can wire your whole entire farm or home 100 times over and never have to worry about the value of any resistance. Um, again, the only account for resistance will be in voltage drop and loss on long runs of wire so and if you know you're wiring a shed or something that's 100 200 feet from your house it's generally not an issue when you start to get into longer runs and that then it's something you need to consider if you have a shed that's 1200 feet away from your house um, you're certainly going to have to account for voltage drop 
or what's going to happen is the voltage is, voltage is going to run down again inversely proportional the amperage will drive up so if you're figuring the amperage on what your components are which is a normal way of calculating it they'll actually be higher and you can overload the circuit and a lot of equipment if you draw too much amperage through it you can damage the motor or the equipment so again if you're dealing with a real long run you'll need to take that into consideration the basic starting point for ohm's law is at the three o'clock position in the e the e part of the wheel e voltage equals i amperage times resistance and or more accurately the one in the two o'clock position e equals power over amperage so power is measured in wattage if you look at the one in the eight o'clock position p equals e times i that's how you solve for wattage so say you have a drill that draws four amps it's 115 volts or you know 100 let's say 120 volts to make the math easier if you if it if it's 120 volts and it draws four amps then you know that it's gonna produce 480 watts and so when you're figuring out lighting loads and stuff that becomes more critical um now in the next video we're gonna look at some of those basic calculations so thanks for watching and I hope you'll stand by and check out the third and final part of the video thanks